by the grace of God, like I always say, this ministry has been run solely by vision. Someone say vision. vision. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish and they cast away restraint. They misbehave because they don't see. What stops a man from misbehaving is how far he has seen. Joseph said, I will not do this and sin against God. It was not because of anything, because God has shown him a vision. He said, ah, the vision God gave me is not Potiphar's house. So therefore, Potiphar's wife is not enticing because of a vision. So if you see yourself continually struggle with sin, it's because you have not seen your future. If you have a peek into your future, there are some things you will not do. There are some what? There are some things you will never do because you can see that you are the next president. So you will not give people a picture of you that they will use against you. <laughs> when I see our sisters, they are still our sisters, they are coming to Christ naked on social media. I tell them it's because they don't know their future. If they know that one day they will be connected to marry a senator and that will stand against the senatorial seat of their husband, they will not go naked. But because of the present likes and shares and views and the little thorough cover that Facebook will give them, they decide to go naked because they cannot see. The moment your eyes is enlightened, your body will be full of light. That means your body will be tracing light. How many of you have ever studied biology and you see where they plant a seed of beans and they cover darkness everywhere? And they only create one source for light at the left corner. What happens to that bean stalk? It grows towards the light. What does that mean? Light and understanding has the ability to create shining of growth. Because without light, nothing can grow. So it will look for light. So when your light is in the east and you are in the west, you will grow towards the east. So it means that even if you are living with prostitutes, once you have enlightenment, you don't become a prostitute. You grow towards light, even though you're, you are there. If you are in the living in the midst of arm robbers, you will not be influenced by them because you can see. If you are a brother... And all the ladies are coming to you. I like you. I like you. I want to date you. I want to sleep with you. And you are saying yes now. Uh, I'm a hot guy. Hot kid. They are chopping me like Indomie. <laughs> how, how long does it take to finish Indomie? <laughs> there are some men here. That when they put their fork inside and they steer, steer, steer. <laughs> Two Indomies or one fork. <laughs> two minutes they finish Indomie because he was prepared for two minutes. See, all the girls are just calling me rush, rush, Indomie. Yeah, we're well done. But the moment you can see that ability to understand your future is bright and the girls, some of them are glory thieves. You will guard your glory with teeth. By the time you say, ah, they say, ah, we renew. He's a madman because he has a future. If you see, you won't sin. If you understand that, that the iPhone they are giving you now those who did not say for Blackberry Boat 5, where's Blackberry now? <laughs> or Blackberry Porsche. See, I'm using Blackberry Porsche. Hello? And you know that they sleep with you before it, and they've taken your glory. When Blackberry Porsche goes out of vogue and iPhone is there, you, there will be no glory to buy iPhone. <laughs> there will be no what? No glory. Many of us, that's how we are. Because we don't know what we carry, we are living anyhow. Because you cannot see. When there is no vision, the people perish and they cast away restraints. I'm talking to some of us here. I can point you out. That's why I'm a prophet. But I will say, maybe if the Holy Spirit lead me, I'll point one of you. You do not know that something has been taken. The Bible makes us understand that there was a man, a man of great strength without physical attribute of the strength. His name was Samson. 
The Bible says the Philistines ask, where does his great strength lie? That means he does not look like Okogan. If he look like Okogan, they'll say he's the muscle. Very slim guy. But the Bible says when the spirit of the Lord comes upon him, he becomes a wild man. Only one man took down a thousand Philistines. You know what a thousand Philistines is? I'm not talking of soldiers that use guns. Soldiers that walk as farmers with cutlass and sword. They are physically strong and use the jawbone of an ass to slay how many? Eh? Thousands. May I just reduce it to one? It doesn't make sense. The Bible says one day he was going to the city and they, from the valley of Shorek, from prostitute house, they said they were looking for him. Drunk man. He got to the gate. They thought they've cornered him. The Bible says he shook the gate. The Bible says at a point in time, as he was shaking the gate, the gate gave way. Bah! They thought that he would leave the gate on the floor. He carried it and he carried it on the heel. They said, we will run after him. Make it day. Make it day. <laughs> Nobody ran with him. But the Bible says when Delilah took him on his lap and began to rub his head, she shaved the hair on his head clean. He was still sleeping. What was he eating? He was eating sin because he did not see. What did he eat that gave him such a sleeping tablet? The Bible makes us to understand that after he was shaved, she said, Samson, Samson, the Philistines are upon thee. And Samson came under. How far now? It's me now. The Bible says he shook himself. But the Bible, I love this, the, the, the version that said, he wished not that the spirit had gone. He wished not that the presence of God had departed from him and they caught him like a boy. They all held him like this. They heard, you know how, many, how police used to carry people on their belt. They all held him like this. Oh yeah, go. He was jumping. A man that was killing them in thousands. A man that their kings were happy. Their kings were happy that they finally caught one man, not a whole army, one man. Many of us here, we, are in the, we have entered into Delilah because we could not see our future. In Nancy, you say, all your mates are flying high. You, you are in one spot. Not because they are better than you, but because you were not able to see. And somebody came and took what you don't have. Listen to me and listen to me. Well. I was teaching one of my sons I was talking to him about John chapter 10 verse 10. For the thief cannot not but to steal, to kill. So I said the devil cannot kill. The devil is a creature of habit. The same way God is a creature of habit. They don't change their principles. The devil cannot destroy you until he has stolen from you. The devil cannot kill you until he has stolen. So it's a process. Steal, kill. And I was telling you that there are two types of stealing. There is a stealing that is called thievery. Thievery. Thievery is the art of taking something from somebody. Then there is armed robbery. Under thievery, you have burglars. You have uh, uh, pickpockets. Then you have armed robber. Armed robber comes with gun or knife or bottle, a weapon to displace you of what you are carrying. But the other one comes when you are not sensitive or when you don't know the value of what you carry. That's why you will take gold and drop it on the floor. So a thief comes and sees the gold and says, ah, this person does not know the value of his gold. Mm. Those are the two ways Satan steals. Many times you don't know what you are carrying, but yet they are stolen it from you. You don't know that what you are carrying is what will save your generation. I was talking to a son of mine yesterday. I said, listen to me. If you fail, your generation has failed. I said, you cannot see, but me, I'm telling you, I can see it. The whole thing of your generation is given to you. Their life is in your hand. If you miss it, they have missed it. Hold it. Why? Because so many people don't see that they are carrying something. They don't see it. They don't know. The Bible says, Esau said to Jacob, he said, what is my birthright to me? And I began to meditate. Maybe Esau was hungry and he had ulcer. And the hunger was so deep in the spirit that, ah, it's either I eat or I die. And the devil, in the form of his brother, stood beside him and said, 
brother, give me your bath right, I'll give you my porridge. Porridge is not yam alone. Porridge is a mixture of different spices. The smell of the porridge was entering into his esophagus, into everything. He said, what is my bath right to me? He took, he sold his bath right. Everything that happened to brother Esau after then did not happen after. It happened the day he sold his bath right. The fact that his mother even ended up hating him was because he had sold his bath right. His mother didn't like him. His mother preferred his brother. Not because of anything. Because of what? He has sold his bath right. Because he did not know what the bath right meant. Listen to me. Your enemy knows what you are what. The devil knows what you are what. That's why he will send different tricks to collect your blessing. To collect your glory. To collect that little blessing that God has given you that would have made you to shine. Listen to me. What makes a star to shine is light. You know the moon is not bright. The moon is a reflection of the sun's glory. Stars are not shining. They are a reflection of the sun. So for you to shine, there must be light. When they off your light, you'll just be a fine, lightless human being. That's why you see some ladies, you see some brothers, they look nice. They look nice, but they are empty. When you talk them that is bagang, bagang, bagang. That's when you see somebody hustling. Doing what everybody will be doing a particular business. By the time you enter it, your own time, it will crash. You will not be wondering that, what is wrong with me? Somebody say, hey, it's only in Africa, which, listen to me, it happens everywhere. Go and read history very, very well. And go and read stories of nations. And see why they came down. Roman civilization was the best civilization in the world. They conquered the whole world. But they were sexually perverse. They were this. Go and read Romans chapter 1. The, Paul had to say, he said some people, they gave themselves to a reprobate mind. It was in Rome he was talking to. For them to do things that were uneasy. Having sex anyhow. They were living a lascivious lifestyle. After some time, from within them, they destroyed themselves. Go and find out the history of Rome. Rome, Rome defeated Jam Germanic tribes at the worst of their, from the Viking blood. They are warriors. Rome defeated them, colonized them. Entered Britain, colonized Britain. But you know the problem. Inside of them, they destroyed their civilization because they, they didn't understand the glory they were carrying. Many of you have glory. When people see, are you the same person they used to see when you were young? I'll tell you how you know that there's no more glory. People used to like you. Ah, fine girl, come. What do you want to buy? Fine boy, come. They use good things to lure you. But as you are growing old and you become lascivious and sexually immoral and everything is scared, you are just smashing, smashing, smashing. You are a smasher. And after some time, you find out that people don't like you anymore. They will call you, come and get a job. The day you come, they will just feel like, who called you to come here? Leave this place. Or they will start telling you stories. Something has been taken from you. But today, God will restore. Yeah. Bible says, where there's no vision, the people what? Yeah. And they cast away restraint. That is, they do anyhow because they can't see. Some of us here, we came to this world. You know, glory is different. I'm going to be talking to us in the next few minutes. About glory is different. Everybody has glory. But glory is different. But every glory is intended for the user. Some glories are intended for others. I was telling somebody, I say a snail is not slow. A tortoise is not slow. It's moving at a speed. But when a horse begins to walk like a snail, because naturally a horse is what? Fast. When it now starts walking like a snail, then the horse is sick. So it means that there's a level of glory that you carry and there's a manifestation in that glory. That when the opposite begins to happen, you should know that something is wrong. How do you know you have glory? How do you know the level of your glory? Number one, the Bible says, wise men were attracted to what? To who start? Jesus didn't start rose in the east. And wise men saw it and they were looking for the star. Number one, glory makes people to be attracted to you. If you are a person and people just like you. That's number one, attraction. 
Attraction is not the product of fair skin. When they say a person is attractive, it's not because of the skin color. It's a spiritual thing. You can see a dark person that people like. You can see someone that is not so beautiful that, and people are just always coming. You, some people, they are poor. They will wear some funny clothes. And people will be wanting that. This clothes is so nice. <laughs> Who sold your clothes for you? There's glory. Oh, God makes you attractive. People will come to you. Number two, glory makes you controversial. Glory makes you what? The word controversy means that you are not in the normal setup of people. You have make people who have a divided opinion about you. Some people will like you excessively. Some people will hate you excessively. They will not be in between concerning you. You will not enter a place and nobody will see you. Is that you enter a place and say, it's too proud. She's too proud. Or I just like her. Those things, that is what glory does. It makes you controversial. The Bible makes us understand that David was a son of controversy. You don't know. Let me tell you how David was a son of controversy. He was the last child, Abby. But he was the only one the father could trust with the sheep. The money of Jesse was his sheep. And he kept David in charge. But his brothers found him controversial. So when the prophet Samuel came to the house and he said, how many children? Ah, there's one more. Is there one more? Go and wait, bring him. Let's wait for him. When that one came, they anointed him a bit. The Bible says when he had, Eli when he had um, Goliath shouting, he went to meet Goliath. He said, he went to meet his brother. He said, how far? What will they give? He said, you. Where have you kept your father's few sheep? He was what? Controversial. When he killed Goliath finished, so he 1,000. David killed them. How many people did David kill for heaven's sake? <laughs> so that they will hate him. So it was what? Controversial. People will be polarized about your personality. That's, the higher the glory, the higher that. If your glory is much, people will hate you. You cannot walk in a clique. They will backbite you. The third and final way to know you have glory betrayer. The Bible says, and Joseph had a dream and when he was going to meet his brother, they said, behold, the dreamer comments. His own brothers, same father. And they said, let's kill him and see whether he's what? What's the meaning of kill him? Let's end him. Let's end him totally. Let's finish him. Whether he's glory. Do you know when they even sold him, they took his clothes and put it inside blood so that the father would not look for him? Glory. Glory attracts hatred. So when you see yourself, you are attractive, you can't stay in a clique and people hate you. Know that you have glory. I understood this concept with my own life. <laughs> I understood it with what? If you know me very well, you understand. Very, very controversial. Even now I'm controversial. They will be wondering what he's playing guitar. What is he doing? It's fake, job. Some people say it's not fake. I like him. He's a man of God. Some people say, Some people say ah. you, can, you can't keep quiet. Either you, you must either hate, you must, you must be polarized. I'm telling you, this is what has happened to me consistently. Hatred. Sometimes you begin to wonder, I didn't do anything to anybody. What did I do? What did I do? No, you didn't do anything. The glory. When you have those three grace upon your life, you must be extra careful. Because there are some people they call glory hunters. They understand that when they get one down, they have gotten 200. So they will leave the 99 and face you. There are some ladies, some brothers. That when you are a lady like that, they will just be haunting you. They will drop all the money they have to sleep with you as a sister. How are you? What's wrong with you? Are you going to school? Let me carry you. He oh, oh, oh. say, he loves me. He doesn't love you. He wants to eat something. He himself might not know, but something inside of him is haunting you. As a brother too, you just see them. I just like him. Hello? How are you? Say, I'm fine. On Valentine's Day, they give you gifts. They are hunting. 
When they see you, you say, fine boy, how are you? If they say, I'm fine, your head will be swelling. <laughs> One day, by the time they, they will suck that glory, it's like nectar. I'll give you another example. There's, how many of you know that the colors on flower is for a reason? You see flower called yellow, red, purple. Why are they like that? It's because the bumblebee or the wasp see them from a distance and go to them to suck from them. When they suck from them, they carry their pollen grains, the seed of that flower, and they take it somewhere else and plant it without knowing. So that's their beauty attracts them, makes them attractive, sorry, for the bumblebee to carry their, or else they will die without producing. Listen to me, you need people to be attracted to you, but you don't need to sleep with them. Many of you are here because you like me as a person. Abby? Huh? If it's miracle you have collected, you can go. But there is something that makes me attractive to you. It's necessary because it's glory. The only thing that you need to do as a person carrying that is to shield yourself. Because there is beauty in scarcity. When you have been used, that's all. That's why you see some people, they call them Oguana. Because they didn't understand that you have to protect what God has given to you. Joseph understood that Potiphar's wife was looking for glory. The Bible says because of Joseph in the house of Potiphar, Potiphar's house was blessed. That Potiphar did not care to look into what is going on in the house anymore. He didn't care. What he was doing was just what? He would come and eat and go. Then the wife spotted him. <laughs> Something is unique about this boy. Listen to me. Potiphar was a eunuch. A eunuch is somebody that does not have private parts. You cannot walk in the palace of the Pharaoh without with having your private part. They will remove it. So wife is honorary status. Not sexual partner. So they honor you with a wife, not so that you can procreate, but because you are faithful to the Pharaoh. The normal practice is the princess, the one you married, will be a wife for the party that you will carry on your hand. The people that will be servicing her are your slaves, sexually. So Mrs. Potiphar was in her right to want to have sexual intimacy with Joseph. It was in her right. The only thing they didn't want is rape. That's the reason why she did not say Joseph slept with me. She said he tried to rape me, so I took his clothes. What she wanted was to take the nectar of his life. Was to swallow him. Some of us here, somebody has swallowed our nectar. But today they will vomit it out. <laughs> You know, when you are in a deliverance ministry, you hear different things. I've taken that glory. I've used that glory. I've taken it. I've used it. Some of you, as you are sitting down here, the man sitting down beside you has been asking you for your number. Keep your glory. You know, we are in a church of thousands, so not everybody is a child of God. Some people are hunter, glory hunter. What I'm saying is truth. Remember when we started this ministry? And I was like, uh, like a uh, rabbit. Sorry, bat. You know, bat does not have flesh. And sisters will come. And the next thing, you know, that time, now there's so much gap. That time, there's no much people. And the next thing is, sir, I like, I'll just ever walk down, ever walk down. <laughs> but there was something that the Potiphar's wife in those sisters were saying. That if I had made a mistake, I won't see the glory of today. That time, I had to what? To keep myself. Intentionally. We have seen things, so. But we know where we are going. I didn't say we know where we are going. We know what we are going. Uh -huh. I know you chose what, not where. Because glory is not a place. It's a being. If you call it a where, 
you can miss road. But if you know it's a what, wherever you go, there's glory. Listen to me. Joseph was not in the palace. He was a slave. And yet, the glory was there. What you need is glory. What you don't need is... What you, what you don't need is a change of location. The reason why you want to run from Nigeria is because there's no glory with you. If there's glory with you in Nigeria, it will work for you. You know, I want to run to America. If there's no glory with you, America will be hot. I was doing deliverance for a certain sister. Beautiful sister. Beautiful and enhanced. Name of enhanced. Enhanced means that she had gone length to increase the dimensions that God has given to her. As I minister to her, the demon in her said, we are using her as hot spot. So I now ask, what is hot spot? So my son has me say, hot spot is that thing on the phone that when you put on your phone. Now, Yahoo boys have used the sister. I'm telling you fact. Anybody that now sleeps with her, they now transfer the glory through her to them. After she was delivered, the boy called her. I would say, Nibololo, where did you go? Where did you go? Do you know, do you think you can run? Do you think you can run? Do you think you can run? You can run from me. The boy that was not the boy was abroad. She was here. And she began to mention the guys she has slept with. I'm talking of big men in the nation. I don't want to mention their name. And I noticed that all of them, they lost their position as king. They lost their position as, uh, let me not be too clear. They lost their position. And she was somebody that they carried. And the truth is, when she came, she wanted to carry me too. I, she told me by herself, she said, sir, anytime I see you, I go on a tree. I said, please come back, man. You will, you will not destroy me. Generations are waiting to hear the voice that God has given to you. Don't let them take it. Many people, they've taken it to it. But our God is a restorer. All of us have a life bar. Glory life bar. The more you allow Delilahs of life or men because men too can be Delilah. They will use money. Lady will use their body. You don't have money for school fees. What is wrong with you? Come to the hotel now. Give you your school fees. Sam, it's because of this school fees so and you open your leg. What is school fees with no glory? Now, they might not be doing it for us or for Yahoo based on their mind, but there is something inside of them that is taking something. And listen to me. If you are wearing white and the white is very dirty and they clean it, wash it, wash it, wash it, it will be off white. You don't know. Well, how many of you have seen that white before that is clean but it's not white? You can wear it in the night, but you cannot dare wear it in the day. That's how some people's glory are. Don't get to that point in your life. This message is for somebody. I didn't plan it. It's for somebody. When that sister calls you, say, hello, how are you? Come to my house, I've cooked rice. Run. Run, no, run. Proverbs chapter 6, where the, the wisest man on earth was talking about the destruction of uh, adultery. Because that's one of the weapons Satan is using in these last days. It's the mightiest weapon. It's the weapon of what? Of the last days. That's why I'm intentional about telling you people of God. And those who are watching me all over the world. There is something you are carrying that you must keep. How many of you have ever had a gold jewelry before, ladies? If you have gold jewelry, is it, will you put it down? Will you wear it in the middle of the night and be walking on the road? Because you know that thief will come to you. Why? Because what? It is valuable. Now that you know, you will be beaten with many stripes. Your glory is more important than your life. Jesus lived for 33 years, but his glory was intact. We are still talking about him 2,000 years later. There is BC before Christ and AD after death of Christ. Why? Because he carried the glory. 
John the Baptist lived for about the same time. He is never forgotten. He's the greatest prophet that ever lived because of his glory. It was intact. Anybody that is not mindful of his glory will soon lose his shine. If you have been blessed by this video, like, follow, and share.